Hello there, it's Paul here and welcome along everyone. Now, last project I did the vase where I did the string pull with the Joe Sonja iridescent paint. And to get the piece of walnut dark enough, I used some walnut colouring and built it up quite a few layers and it came out fairly well near to black. It's a very, very dark brown. And that was all a lot of experimentation. So today I want to do even more experimentation and I want to compare <coughs> really like the the chestnut ebonizer lacquer this costs now about £8.50 a tin that's 400 mil compared to a 250 mil tin of ordinary spray paint I've gone for matte on this one and this costs me 99p so it's a fraction of the cost and to, to prepare this, what I've done, I've took some more of the walnut, I've created a couple more vases, hollowed them out, I've got a shorter, thicker one, which is what I'll use the chestnut ebonizing lacquer on. And I've got a slightly narrower, but taller one, which is what I'll use the spray paint on. I have sanded both of these down to 600 grit inside and out. Now the instructions for the ebonizing lacquer do say on here to, after you've shook it well, to apply a coat of either acrylic or cellulose sanding sealer, which is what I'm about to do here. So I'm just going to let that dry, which shouldn't take too long at all, because I do thin my sanding sealer down, and then I'll give that a second coat, and I'm just going to knock that back again with the 600 paper. And I'll just give that one more coat. Now the interesting thing on this, it just says shake well before use. And when you buy a lot of these tins of paint for mixing these up, they don't recommend actually shaking, up some, shaking them up and down like you'd normally expect. They actually recommend rotating them on a basis like that because then that way you're spinning the ball bearings round the bottom of the paint which then slowly mixes everything up whereas when you're shaking the ball bearing up and down it doesn't give that same agitation to the to the actual liquid inside so i've given this one two minutes on the circular motion and it says here to hold the can about 25 to 30 centimeters away um, and apply several thin coats allowing 10 minutes between coats And try that with the lathe running now. So that's given the first base coat there. And I'm going to leave that now a few minutes before I then give that a second coat. Now I've treated this exactly the same way as the other one. I've given it uh, a coat sanding sealer, sanded it back to 600 and then given it a second coat and it's fully dried. Now I've got two tins of paint here because my first tin is almost empty and I have just shaken these on the rotational basis, both of them for two minutes. So they're both ready to use. So I will do this exactly the same way. that has already got a really good coat on it now the first observation on these is that the paint does come out a lot thicker and this is given a really really good covering and i can still see the grain pattern through there i don't know how well that shows up on the camera but the ebonizing lacquer which is touch dry now that's really rough and it still hasn't even covered everything yet where this has kept its smoothness so I'm going to give another coat of this. I'm going to try and do it a little bit thicker this next time and just see what it comes out like. And I'll do this with the lathe running because it just seems to give a, a more even coating. I 
like that's showing more like a gray than anything and i'm going to leave that 10 minutes again to dry off before i then give it another coat so i've got the one with the paint now back in the lathe and as i said this is really nice and smooth and i can still sort of see the grain in there so i'm going to give this one more coat just to see what that comes out like because this does go on fairly thick to start with Right, that's given a nice good coverage now and that does look very stippled like the other one did so it's interesting to see how that dries up whether it does dry as smooth that could be a case that i just need to do lighter coats now these have both had two coats and this one has now come up really really rough um it's i don't know whether it's down to the spraying or whether it's the grain lifting dust or what but that really it's got a like a sandpaper feel to it and just like this one has it's it's a finer sandpaper but it's you can still hear it it is quite rough now that i've done enough i think on there you can still see some of the grain through it um i'm going to let that harden off fully and then i will try and probably gently go over that with something like whether it be the brillo pad or something like that just to try and smoothing that off but that i will leave now whereas this one it's still very patchy in there uh, you can still see all the wood through there so it's still not really given a proper covering so i'll give that one more go now and hopefully that should be enough now so i'll let that dry now i've left these both to dry overnight and visually you can see quite a difference now the ebonizing one seems to have got this really really pitted effect and it's actually quite nice but it's not really what you always want whereas the paint has come out a lot lot smoother looking however this also has a bit of a stippled effect to it um, very much like a very very light sandpaper now i think both of these are caused from probably when i was running the lathe spraying them because my minimum speed is 500 rpm and therefore if you get any slight build up of paint it's going to run a bit and with the motion of the lathe turning around so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut both of these back slightly um, and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to hand spray them while they're on the lathe just manually turning the lathe so they get more of an even coating now i've cut these both back to 600 and i don't know whether that shows very well on the camera but this one still has rather and this is the ebonizing one and it still has that visual pitting effect to it um which to me probably shouldn't be what it should look like now the paint that's come out nice and smooth and as more of an effect that you'd expect and because i've used 600 grit, grit paper you've got very very slight marks on there from where it's been sanded back so what i'm going to do now is now hand spray them again without the lathe running now i've just given the both the tins a good shake again so they're all ready to use and this is the ebonizing one on there so this time i'm going to hand spray this with the with the lathe stationary And I will say on this, the first look on this, it's giving that very pitted effect again. So I don't know whether it's a problem with the nozzle. Right, so this is the painted one. And so other than where I've sanded it back, causing the marks, this looks smooth and actually quite nice. So I'll spray this exactly the same way. And I think the big difference with these is that I can already feel that the paint on this tin comes out at a lot quicker rate than what the ebonizing one does. So I suspect that is also going to cause different types of effects. So I'll leave that to dry now. Now these have dried for probably an hour or two now, so they are totally dry. And 
I've took some pictures of these in different locations in the shed here, outside in the sunlight or in or outside in the shade, just so you get a better idea of what these actually look like. Because of the way the camera has took the pictures, this one does come out looking a lot more grey, and I don't know how well it shows up on the camera here, but it is actually a total black colour, same as that. I'd say that is more of a jet black than that one. Um, but the interesting thing on this, this still, this is still not fully smooth, even though I've sanded it back and sprayed it again. That could be because I've had this tin for probably about three years now, and it may not give such a nice fine spray, but it does give almost like a stippled effect. So there is a little bit of texture there for a slight roughness. Other than that, for finish wise, I mean, this one has come up totally flat, shiny, uh, even though it's only a matte finish on this, it's really got uh, a nice finish on. You can just about see in places some of the texture through the wood, where this one also probably slightly sort of for where some of the grain is. It's going to be a total personal preference of what you prefer. If you're looking for something for a base, I honestly think something like that may be better. It's probably quarter of the price than using the actual ebonizing lacquer. If you really want to go down the ebonizing route, I mean, I've only ever used this once before when I bought it and I did a finial and I really wanted the grain to start coming through on the wood and I was really disappointed the way this worked. To me, this is just like a paint. Buying something like that, quarter of the price, is probably just as good. Now, if you really want to go for an ebonized finish, uh, if you look back on some of my previous projects, especially like my ship's cannon, the actual main barrel of the cannon was done uh, with my own ebonizing solution, which is what I mixed up here. And that is really easily done. All I bought was some distilled vinegar. Uh, I'm sure other types of vinegar will work. And you can see how much I've used it there. That's a 568 mil bottle there. I've, so I've probably used in the region of just under 300 mil. Basically, I've probably three quarter filled that jar with the vinegar and I put ordinary wire wool in it. The only thing you have to make sure is that the wire wool is degreased uh, because some wire wools will have a grease all over them. And what happens over a period of time, the vinegar uh, dissolves the wire wool. The process does start fairly quickly. You can start seeing changes within the first day or two. Ideally, you'd probably need it to leave it at least one or two weeks until literally everything has dissolved. Now, the only problem with using an ebonizing solution, it works based on the tannin levels in woods. Now, oak has a fairly high tannin level, which is why you see um, with the ones I've done, I tend to use an awful lot of oak. It does give a nice effect and you can sand it back and lower the, the extent that you want. With something like Sapili, it goes jet black. And Sapili doesn't really have much of a grain, but again, you can cut it back a bit with sandpaper if you want to, to lessen the effect on it. Now, if you put it on some other woods, I mean, for example, I mean, plywood, ordinary plywood I use, it has literally no effect whatsoever. So you will be limited on some of the things you can use it on. But the good thing about using an ebonizing solution like that where I've made it myself is that it actually soaks into the wood and therefore colors the wood whereas with the ebonizing spray it's just like a paint it goes over the top and just gives you that effect on the top so hopefully this has been of interest to you now next project video I will be getting out the iridescent paints again and decorating these two up hopefully thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next project video